There's a lot of hype around this brand new printer by Elegoo. This is the Centauri or Centuri Carbon. It is an extremely affordable option to get into 3D printing and it's kind of creating a wave for Elegoo. Now for me, Elegoo has only ever stepped in when it comes to filament. Uh, they've really created a great name for themselves with filament that works with all other brands. I do love my Bamboo Lab filament as well, but this guy is no longer a bed slinger, which means the bottom plate does not move back and forth anymore. It just slowly moves down as the upper level goes crazy printing. And if you're not familiar with our channel, I think it's extremely important to understand perspective. Primarily, we are an RC channel. We do RC planes, cars, drones, all that RC fun stuff. But recently, I have gotten very heavy into the 3D printing world. Years ago, I started with an Ender. I've had a Flash Forge and a couple bad experiences with those. But when I finally pulled the trigger and got the X1C, that was kind of the uh, game changer for me because finally I could print successful things with multicolors with one try and it actually pulled off the bed without me having to like get a paint scraper to scrape my stuff off. That's the most impressive thing to me that I could just pull the bed off and pop stuff off. Still blows my mind. So because I've had so much fun and I would call success with this printer, even designing and printing and selling my own things like a sunshade for RC transmitters, I decided I needed to up my game. I think we all feel it when we get our first successful print run, printing one thing at a time just doesn't cut it. So I went into the two A1s that I have here. This is all for context so you guys know that I'm still pretty much a beginner, not even a solid year into this yet, but I'm diving into it very heavily now with another brand because I don't want to just become one brand snob. This is the Elegoo and I want to talk about my first print experience. Yes, I started with a Benchy. I'm just going to continue with that tradition because I think it is a good first print and I have not even taken that out yet. Actually, look at that. Abby just slid off. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. That's cool. So I didn't even need to take that out, but I will uh, just because that is the process, right? So uh, let's see how that turned out because I haven't taken that off of the print bed yet. That is my Benchy, which looks pretty good. I do have a little bit of stringing here, but this thing printed in 15 minutes and like three seconds, I think it was. And there's a couple little rough spots there, like the overhang. I don't know how well you can get that on camera, Abby, but you know, for a 15 minute super fast Benchy, it mostly turned out pretty stinking good. It's not perfect, but this was really fast. So let's talk about this is not going to be an in-depth video because obviously I just got this, but let's talk about the price point first and foremost. You know, something like this back here is $1,000, $1,200, depending on if you get the AMS or not. This one does have the ability because of this on top to print in four colors if I choose, but this one currently just has one spool of filament. I don't know if you caught that on the mm -hmm. side there. So luckily that fit just perfectly by my A1 on this shelf with a little bit of an overhang here on the filament. I think down the road they do intend on providing an AMS option on this, but for now, uh, it's just one color prints. So in my opinion, that puts this in the $330 A1 category because this is currently $299. And they even have like a, you know how DJI has fly more bundles? Mm -hmm. This has like a print more bundle or something okay. like that. Comes with filament, comes with tools, comes with a few extra, I think an extra plate. Um, and it's right under $400 if you get that, but this current setup is $299. Remember, this is $330. So because this is enclosed, it allows you to print more filament options. Some filaments have to have an enclosed environment to be able to print them for better temperature control. Now, when you're printing PLA, open it actually recommends you opening the top Can door. Can I sit on this? Yeah, I think you're probably fine. <laughs> Now to do PLA, they recommend printing with the top opened. So just taking that off so that it has a little bit of airflow and doesn't get too hot in there because PLA doesn't want to be too super hot while it is printing. It needs a little bit of time to cool and solidify. It's also really important to note that this thing is insanely loud. It is five times louder than my two bamboos.
this guy you almost can't hear, but I don't think that's a fair comparison. Even though visually they look like you should be able to compare them because they're the same size print bed, it looks like the same thing, right? It's a metal box. Uh, but that is four times the cost basically, so it's unfair to compare that. But as far as noise is concerned, even when this is closed, I do think it's significantly louder than my A1s. And these are bed slingers. Um, this thing, for whatever reason, is just really loud. I don't know if it's like cheaper parts or what, but when it's printing, it, and I got some samples of it, I want you guys to hear it, it's crazy. Even the fans are insanely loud on it. But I am blown away that this comes in at $299 because it doesn't shake as much as this, which is a huge pro. With a bed slinger, we've got a lot of centrifugal force just going back and forth. Uh, this one has way less movement, way less shake, and so that's a huge win for me, a big appeal. I also think, because we're comparing like side by side here, let's talk about the screen size of both of these. I mean, this one is significantly larger than the one on the A1. The A1, we can swing around like this, which is nice if you need to position your printer in a different way because some people do or if you're just moving it around it's gonna save that from breaking off and this one is important to note that it's just a solid angle you can't reposition that it's backlit really nicely and that is as bright as it goes and it is a touch screen and I think from my short experience so far it is very responsive to my touches uh, one thing to note, I did do a firmware update when I got this. It was only a very small firmware update connected to the Wi-Fi and it was extremely easy to do. But I don't see anywhere in my navigating menus at all. And I've looked, I've spent time looking, scrolling, swiping. I don't see anywhere as an option to unload and reload my filament. So I'm in a little panic right now when I run out of my yellow filament. I don't know how to reload more because I don't have an unload reload option. It says I do in the instructions, but it's not there, I promise you. I'm kind of thinking like that firmware update made that go away or something, I don't know. And if it's just that I'm stupid and don't know where it's at, then I think for Elegoo, because they made this super beginner friendly, this is kind of designed to be a person's first 3D printer in my opinion they should not have hidden that because everything else is like obvious and the user interface is really good except for that. So if you guys know uh, something that I don't, please let me know in the comments below. It is really cool that this has a light too. Abby, I'm gonna hit the light. I think it's probably gonna be a little hard to see through. Well, we'll do it open like this. So there's a light, it's on my side. There's light off, there's light on. It's just as bright. <laughs> Nothing changed on my well, camera. I got, I got a couple no. B-roll shots. There, I. It is a, there is a light in there, which is nice. If it's pitch black dark, you can at least get a glimpse in there to see what's printing. So I do like that it comes with light. It's no brighter or dimmer than what we have on the A1s or the X1s. The X1C might be a little bit brighter, but it's four times the cost. Let's talk about building this thing. So when I unbox this, it basically looks exactly like this with the glass plate off of it. It had three screws on the bottom that you have to take out, three little bolts, and it comes with tools included to actually back those out. I think that this one was by far my fastest 3D printer up and running. From out of the box to plugged in and doing its little self-test and firmware update, I was 30 minutes on the physical, actual unbox and build powered on, which is super fast. I mean, very impressive. I, I'm sure I could have done it way faster, um, but I was just taking my time and being cautious and stuff. So a person can take this out of the box and get it up and running and printing really, really, really fast. One thing that I found a little interesting was that instead of a micro SD card slot anywhere on this, they opted with a USB drive. Now that's included, which is nice. And I do believe this actually has internal storage too, because when I go to my local, there's somewhere that showed me, when I go to my info page, it shows zero gigs of 6.4, and that was before I plugged in the USB drive. So I think that is really cool. It seems to have a built-in storage, but I cannot actually confirm that because there wasn't anything that actually talked about that. This video as of right now is really just my first impressions. And I think 
think this is a really cool feature considering first impressions. This build plate has a side A and a side B. When I've seen previous build plates in the past, they do have two usable sides, but they're usually made of the same material. I'm not saying that this is the first time anyone's ever done this, but I am telling you this is the first time I've had one that has two different textures. This is a textured build plate, and then this is a, I don't know exactly what they call it, PLA specific plate, but it seems really smooth, optimized for PLA printing. So. That's actually pretty cool because that's a smoother build plate and I've always been, even all my PLA stuff, I've printed on a textured build plate. If anyone's curious, while well, I've got this in my hands, that is a 256 by 256 by 256 cubed. So that is your print size, the same as the A1s and the X1C. The point of this video is really just to give you, I think I would call myself absolutely an amateur, though I am invested into this, uh, so I would maybe call myself like a hobbyist amateur with a strong desire to continue to learn and grow in the 3D printing world that has a lot of fun printing things that are free that other people have designed that I just play around with with my kids uh, and you know friends and stuff. <clears throat> and then I also have really enjoyed designing my own things like or, or just printing cool things, uh, selling them and even like my sunshade that I totally designed and have sold a handful of. So, you know, I've really taken a strong fascination with this and I have a huge desire to continue to grow the 3D printing world with the RC world. And I wanna expand my horizons. Like I don't just get fixated on one brand when it comes to RC stuff. I certainly don't wanna just get fixated on one brand when it comes to 3D printing either. And I think for a, well, I would consider a budget friendly, either $1.99 without the case or $2.99 with the case. And I have no idea if and when they'll have an AMS on this, but I think they eventually will. I think that's an amazing price point for a fully enclosed printer. The biggest downside to it, absolutely like the only one outstanding thing that consider I would consider a huge flaw is how loud it is. But I will sacrifice noise and speed any day for a good solid print. I want to have like a very high success print rate. Also another thing to just point out, and I don't know if it's a pro or a con yet, it does seem to take longer to do the self bed leveling compared to my Bamboo Lab printers. Maybe that's gonna give me a higher accuracy and better prints by it taking longer, but it does seem to move slowly when it's doing that self leveling test. So, you know, when you do a self leveling before every print on like an A1, you're only sacrificing about two minutes. But what I've noticed is the self leveling test on this is like two or three times longer. So again, if it's a higher accuracy, I'm gonna do it every time. I don't care if it takes 10 or 15 or 20 more minutes. Overall, I'm extremely impressed with this printer and I cannot wait to throw some of my custom things that I've done on it for comparison's sake. And I hope maybe, I don't know, a few months down the road or something, if you guys find this video interesting, which are just kind of like first impressions, that I will do a follow-up video because really, let's face it, it is important to know how this thing is right out of the box. Is it easy to use? Is it hard to use? Does it give you troubles right out of the box? But it's also really important to know how these things hold up over time. So if you guys find this interesting enough and helpful enough, we will do a follow-up video down the road. My first impressions overall are extremely impressive for this price point. I'm, I'm blown away by what this thing can do and how fast it moves and how easy it was to get up and running. Is it a beginner-friendly budget option in the 3D printing world? Absolutely. I cannot believe what a person or company can do for that amount of money with the level of accuracy that we're already getting on this. Now, if you want to check it out for yourself and see the different options because they do have different bundles and things right now too. We'll have it linked in the description box below. I also wanna say a massive thanks to God for blessing us with the time to jump in front of the camera and share this little moment, this experience with you guys. And last but not least, I wanna say a massive thanks to our Patreon supporters because we couldn't do what we do as often as we do it without your insanely awesome support. If you're into 3D printing, we have a couple easy little videos on the A1 and the X1C. We'll have one of those popping up right about now. Thanks for watching, we'll see you there. Bye.